Have you ever gone out with all your guns and your bags and your vehicle and tried to see what works? If you haven't, this is what we're going to do real quick. we got plenty of bags lined up, some guns already packed in there. Very limited what i got, no PCCs, sorry, no uh, CZ Scorpions for you. But we can make do with what we got and we'll check it out through here. However, what I first want you to do is go down in the, uh, the link below, check out all the discount codes for Breach Pen, Woobie Brothers, Arcane Concerted and Mace brand. They actually provide me with all my uh, my private investigation mace and pepper spray stuff. <clears throat> awesome company, check them out. And a whole lot more. Global Ordnance Link has plenty of ammo. I just checked them. Uh, they got cases of 1,000 rounds, 5.56 and 9 mil. Super hard to find at a somewhat decent price. <laughs> They're all going to be down in the below. Same with all the bag companies here as well. Uh, some you'll recognize, some maybe not. So the first thing we're going to get into is, let's say, the Haley Strategic long bag. So real quick, this bag, it's designed to be a typical you know, carry bag, not looking totally like a rifle bag, though those of us in the know, we know what it really is. However, it can take a full 16-inch gun in it. Right now, I got one that's actually a little longer uh, because I have a 16 inch gun broken down in here. So, one method of carrying inside your vehicle is to have a bag like this, but you want it to not look like a rifle bag, unfortunately. So you can do different options. You can break it down, put in something like that, or any one of these. Real quick, to show you what I mean. This is a AR-10 308. Full long gun, everything you need, <clears throat> and it's got an 18 inch barrel and a Magpul precision stock. No, I don't have the length for you, but length isn't always important. So, uh, a consideration you want to make if you if you genuinely want to store something like this is the fact that a lot of bags, the bigger they get, are going to be harder to be able to conceal inside the vehicle that don't look super obvious. Smaller bags are easier. But there's always the option to break it down into upper and lower and stuff it into something else. Now, if I were going to take this and conceal it in my vehicle somehow, something like this, get it all zipped up, and I would either, one, go up under here, all right, which I'm not going to break down for you, but that remo that involves removing my spare tire. So I don't want to remo move, remove my spare tire, excuse me, because I'm always up in the snow. So, what I could do, like come down here, interior of like my vehicle is super dark, so even on a bright day like it is right now, you can't really see well down there. I would put it something like this. It's not the best, but it's not the worst, and you can easily do something like this. Grab a jacket, and just toss it in there. No, it's uh, like I said, not the best, but at least it breaks up the outline, all right? Which in uh, concealment and camouflage, outlines are huge. Right? Now, we're gonna go down from biggest to smallest. So this is the second one. This is an Everly stock pack. It is not a cherry bomb. It's a little bigger than that. This pack is made for carrying firearms and a whole conglomerate of other gear that you need. They're excellent for hiking as well, Everly Stock. Make sure you check them out. I have quite a few of their packs that I've used over the years. But this one stores a rifle you guys might be familiar with, but because of the overall length of the gun, I had to break it down. So I have a lower receiver and an upper receiver. All right, so if I gotta pull something out like this in a hurry, I have to make the consideration that, hey, I'm gonna have to get those pins out and I have to assemble the gun, essentially, on the go. Which, as we all know from prior experience, can be very important. And it's ready to bang, all right? So this bag, again, looks like a hiking pack. The considerations I would make with this, if I lived in a rural area, <clears throat> and it was common for people to go hiking or I lived up in the mountains. Hiking bags are super easy to carry. Um, I had a few others, but this one worked great. But a gun this size, typically 16 inch, 5.56, five, I wouldn't want to carry in a vehicle or the 308 for that matter, because it is so long. Um, can you do it? Yeah, absolutely. If that's all you got, do what you got to do. That's how I feel about everything. But if you have something a little shorter that's effective for your environment, 
that's probably going to be a little better. So, let's go ahead and take this guy, put him, just going to put him right in the seat and out of the way for now. Grab this, boom. Ta-da! Now, um, this one, yep. Now this is a Vertex bag, Overland, made for Big Daddy Unlimited. Again, Big Daddy Unlimited, link will be down below. It is essentially like the gun mall of America that always has going out of sale business sales. So check them out. Um, I didn't really believe it until I signed up with them. And then comparing prices everywhere, they are consistently the lowest. And they have some pretty solid stuff and they're growing constantly. And you can't get this on Vertex, you can only get it Big Daddy Unlimited. So, M81 Woodland is hot, especially if you live in a place like I do. Now this has a, another gun you'll be familiar with, my 10.5 WROL without rule of law gun, built by Etch Ordnance out of Iowa. Now in order to get this gun in there, it fits just fine, but it's a little snug because I had the Surefire War Comp. But you can get it over there with plenty of room to stuff other material in there like overland pack so what does that what does that make you think shelter food warmth going out places a uh, cold weather gear something like that and you can stuff this in there if you need to conceal as well this it was pretty easy to get in if i needed to if i wanted even more room i could pop the pins and separate it just like we did with the 16 inch as well all right so i'm gonna go ahead and take that guy right there now the key with doing all this is getting out and doing it like everything else uh, a lot of stuff we can figure out if we just grab our gear, step out in the driveway, and do it. Now this has, this is my Gamut 2.0, one of them. Um, it's got a VCM MCMR 11 with a law folder in there. Law folder, to me, law folders, they should be the standard for folding stocks. I've seen a couple others out there, but I've never seen one that runs as consistently and as well as them. My relationship with them, they're solid dudes. Talked to the owner a couple times, but other than that, nothing really. Now, 11.5 on the barrel. It's a little longer than the last one, but because I can shorten it so much with that, I can slip it into a shorter bag than the Overland. <clears throat> now, making these kinds of considerations, 11 and a half inch barrel. When you're picking guns to carry in your vehicle or um, to go out and about with whatever you're doing, you want to pick barrel length based off of my opinion, two different things. The ballistic capabilities that you need and the kind of as much maneuverability as you can get. So if you have a big dually diesel that has all the room and you're roaming a ranch, the 16 inch gun might be your thing. Um, if you're rocking a Jeep or a, a small car, a Prius or whatever, you might want to go something a little smaller. Um, but you also want to make sure that you have rounds capable to reach out to effective distances that you may be engaging in, whether it be a coyote or bad guys that we don't like to talk about these days. Uh, so with that in consideration, <clears throat> because of the area I live in and the different things in the city versus the different things out in the uh, forest that I like to do. I go with something between this and the 16. I rock a 13.7 right now because it does all the ballistics that I need further out and stuff closer in. So let's go ahead and over here to the other side and check that out. And then we'll get into uh, talking about optics. So this is a gray man tack highway sounds a gray man tack mount let me get it here real quick all right it comes with rubber latches that you can adjust and put wherever you want it comes with a mag pouch and then if you want to be really clever get some zip ties like a broke person and zip tie your breech pen in not just for breaching survival actually some people's lives has been saved with this because they've been cut out of different situations from car accidents to logging to signaling helicopters we're starting fires in the middle of winter out in the snow. Breach pens are sick. There will be a link for that below as well. Um, this, Sons of Liberty 13 inch, 13 by seven, excuse me. Yeah. Easily rip out and grab, and it comes right on out. Nice and simple. All right. Now, the reason with the 13.7, it is short enough. I can do any kind of work in and around vehicle that I need to do 
or in a city if need be. Hopefully not, all right? We don't want any of that, but we want to be prepared for everything. But it's also long enough to get me the full ballistic capabilities of a round in there that I want. Um, because a round only needs to travel, if I remember right, don't quote me on this, I think it's eight inches down a barrel for 5.56 to gain its full ballistic capability. However, <clears throat> longer barrels, more velocity, more pressure behind it allows it even more. So, whereas a 16, I can drill further, a 13, seven, I can still get as far, it's just gonna cause me more drop. And c coming with that, it's gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about optics. Optic selection is super important. So for example, on these three guns, on my 10.5, I got an EOTech. On 11.5, I have a Holosun with a primary arms ACSS reticle in there and a three by magnifier. Now, some would say, why well, don't I have the EOTech here? Well, this is a smaller package. So this is actually the smallest collapsible gun I have, but because I have an ACSS with a ballistic drop compensator, I wanted to make sure to throw a little three by magnifier on there. So at distance, I can get what, the full capability out of it. Now, we'll go back over there to the 16. With this gun, primary arms, one to six, first focal plane Raptor with the ACSS reticle. This is not to dial like some of the others. <clears throat> this is simply get your zero and then develop your holds off the reticle, which are pretty intuitive. Um, in my opinion, Primary Arms is doing some great things with reticles that for stupid people like me, I don't have to think about. Dial in the zero for that same round, keep shooting that same round, and it'll keep on working. Um, obviously, as long as you clean your gun. The glass in here is excellent. The reason I go with first focal plane, I do first focal plane with everything. That way I don't have to, you know, think this gun to, or this optic to that optic, it's different. Second focal plane, they're great. They do have some uses. However, for me as a shooter, I much prefer first. So I can take something like this, crank it down to one, and I simply have close quarters capabilities. Or if I need to get a shot further out or close, but I want a PID, proper identification, I can crank it down to six. Like some officers in uh, Arizona recently, they did some solid work taking out a, a kidnapper with hostage. Mount up. Crank down to six, get my shot, boom, nice and easy. All right. So these considerations are something that you want to go through. And if you don't have the different guns to try to check it out or bags, you can like go to a Target and get a Jansport, play with an airsoft gun, go to a buddy that has them, see what they like, measure stuff out, make a two by four to the length of the gun that you want and check it out inside your vehicle. I do have a few other bags here. This is a uh, Vertex Ready Pack, just like um, the Overland. It's a VDU exclusive, Big Daddy Unlimited. Uh, bags like this are great. Work bags, you can fit any single one of these guns. And actually, if I broke them all down, I could probably squeeze them all in here. Uh, I know people that, you, that are welders, for example. They're big work bags. They carry full kit and a uh, seven inch barrel AR in there. All right, these things are excellent. If you have nothing but like a PCC, <clears throat> excuse me, or a, uh, or heck, a Glock, you can use something like this. This is my Vertex Sling commuter, I think it is. Um, and it works great, you can mount stuff in here. If I really wanted to, I could probably break this or this down and squeeze it in here, all right? It just takes trying. And then this guy as well. Uh, a lot of these different kinds of bags, they have different idiosyncrasies. Some of them can have too much. Too many little pockets on the inside, especially if it's meant to carry a gun, can catch up and hang up and keep you from drawing it quickly enough. Now, very important points to make is you can carry a gun inside your bag all day, all your life if you want, but if you don't train and deploying that bag as quickly as possible, then what is it gonna matter? Because you don't know what it's gonna do or where you need to mount up on your vehicle with it or where you're gonna pull from. For example, coming over here on this uh, Gray Man Tech back behind the seat, I know that typically all I need to do is grab here and rip it. And then grab my stock and rip it right out and I got my gun. Uh, 
if I'm gonna be pulling from a bag, I gotta get that bag and then I gotta make sure I know where my zippers are. Zipper discipline is huge and make sure they're always in the same place and then rip it open, put it together if I have to, wherever I store my mags, get my magazine in there, different considerations like that. <clears throat> you can ask all the questions you want, but ultimately it's up to you and what you have and where you are. That's how I decided. Now, I, these are all 5.56 five, except one 308. Uh, caliber choice, up to you as well. 300 black, if you're working somewhere that's going to be uh, within 300 yards with supers and even less with subs, that could be a good option. Um, if all you have is a little AK-74U, use that too, but you don't need a lot of these bags. You can probably grab an Adidas jacket and wrap it around and call it good. Who knows? Uh, six fives there's six fives out there i've heard of people carrying in their vehicles uh, i would have brought out a mini 14 but it's having a little issue so to me i think that's great truck guns are considered to be your beater your beater that's reliable and cheap in case you don't want it to get stolen my point of view if you don't want something stolen then you need to be responsible enough to okay if i'm going to this place i'm going to leave my vehicle for this amount of time i'm going to go ahead and store my weapon at home because a gun inside a vehicle that you're not gonna be around isn't important anyways. All it is is a liability. You're going to constantly, constantly, excuse me, be changing out your vehicle kit just like you would your kit on your body. Nothing's ever gonna be the same for every single thing. That comes down to a responsibility as a shooter, a gun owner, a two-way advocate, whatever you wanna call yourself, to constantly be checking, hey, do I need this here, do I need that there? put it home, maybe swap it out, <clears throat> or make different considerations. Some people have back seats that flip up and can store stuff under. That's pretty sweet, even better. But something like that's even harder to deploy. But if I'm gonna leave my vehicle for longer, that's a little more viable because someone's not gonna see that. Uh, now, real quick before we finish, finish this video, a quick word from our sponsor. Safe Life Defense, makers of multitudes of different kinds of body armor and backpack armor, level 3A plus and above, concealable or high threat level tactical that has got all your molly that you need. You can get them to send you a patch with your first and last name on it if you want. Make sure you go to the link down below and find them. You'll go on there and you will have every single need fulfilled. Check them out. All right, Safe Life, check them out. Now, real quick before we get done, go ahead, go down to the comments, tell me what you got, what you like to carry, how you like to carry it, what bags you're rocking, if it's a Jansport that you stitched up something special or all the way to your high dollar uh, bags, let me know. There's some great companies out there that do amazing things or maybe you have one of your own, who knows? Drop it down in there, check out the links, there's going to be a ton for you guys, all the resources I can bring to you, and Patreon. Make sure you get down there, click the Patreon. So far, I have several, and they're awesome. Thank you, guys. You are actually helping a lot. Lav mics are inbound. Appreciate you. And last thing, Survival Dispatch. It is a conglomerate of all the survival information that you can need, whether it's <clears throat> surviving in cold winters or nuclear apocalypse, what, or just live in your vehicle like a bum. Who cares? I've started writing for them, so you'll start seeing articles authored by me, Weapon Snatcher, John Karugi. Thank you guys, and get out and bang.